Margin fishing, edge fishing for carp, call it what you want, but it's one of my favourite ways of fishing. It's also one of the quickest ways of putting a weight together on any commercial. And here are my top five tips when margin fishing for big carp. Tip number one, positioning yourself in the correct place of your peg, depending on where you're going to be fishing in the margins. Today, I definitely want to fish to my right. There's someone just to my left. I've got a bit of room to my right, so that's where I want to fish. Also, the wind's coming into that point really nice. It plums up nice, that's where I want to fish. And I've positioned my box to the left of my peg, just to give myself that extra two or three foot away from the fish. Bearing in mind, we're not fishing for F1s or small carp, we're fishing for those big wary carp, those ones that come in the edge late in the match. They're going to be wary and the further away I can position myself from where I want to catch them, the better. The more comfortable they're going to be, the more confident they're going to be and the longer they stay in my peg, the more chance I've got of catching them. It's only something small. Also, net positioning, very, very important. Strategically place your nets away from where you're going to be fishing. Sometimes I even tie them back with just a little bit of string or cord, making sure all, all times the net is fully submerged and there's plenty of room for the fish. These big wary carp, they can be you know, quite easy to spook and you don't want to do that. If you can make them feel at home and comfortable, the longer they're in your peg, the more chance you've got of hooking them. And like I say, you don't need too many to really bump your weight up. Tip number two, strong and durable tackle. The only reason you're going to be catching carp in the edge is because they've come in in numbers to clean all the bait up. They're hungry, they're going to be aggressive and they're going to want to eat a lot of bait. They're going to be big as well. So strong, durable, reliable tackle. Big hooks, heavy line, strong main line. Always use lines, normally for me, 022, 024 main line. Seems very strong, but if I do have a breakage, I want it to be my hook length. I can just change my hook length, get another one out of the box. 020 hook, hook lengths, size 10, size 12, size 14 hooks, thick wire hooks. Going on to elastics, always very strong. Again, I'm looking at catching these fish quick. I'm looking sometimes to go from nowhere to winning the match in the last hour. Red hydro or purple hydro are my choices. They're very, very similar. It is a personal choice. Today I'm going to be using red. Like I say, I can get these fish in nice and quick. Everything geared up, strong, durable, from hooks to hook lengths, mainline and elastic. And if you get these fish in your peg and you follow all these tips with strong, durable mainline and everything else, you're going to catch a lot of fish. Tip number three, and again, it's a vitally important part of edge fishing for carp, and that is float choice. It's not just the float being visible, buoyant, taking enough shot, it's the strength of the float as well. Try and look for a float that's got all of these. For me, when I'm fishing in the margins for carp, I want a float that's bigger rather than smaller. For instance, today I'm using a 4B16s in around three foot of water. I've got a bulk around about six to seven inches above my hook and it's a very, very simple rig. But I need the float the right float to take the right amount of shot. We've all been there, you pick up a nice float in the shop, you think, yeah, that's bang on, it's this size, you shot it up and it doesn't carry the correct amount of shot. Always look for a quality float. Obviously, it needs to be nice and visible, nice thick top float. Today, I'm using the Carper Diamond, which is my number one choice when I'm fishing in this depth in the margins. It's strong, it's durable, and it's very visible. And like I say, more importantly, it carries the correct amount of shot. Again, going back down the strength and durability, you don't want floats where the eyes pull out or they're gonna break if the float comes back through the water after losing a fish. The one thing you have to accept when you're fishing in the margins for carp is you're gonna lose odd fish, you're gonna foul look odd fish. It's just a part of the, the way that you're fishing. So your gear does need to stand up and the one thing that will show up is if you've got any weaknesses in your float. So always make sure your float choice is dead right with strength, durability, visibility 
and the most important thing, it carries the correct amount of shot. Tip number four, when you've got all your gear nice and durable and everything else sorted out like your setup, the most important thing then is where to fish in your peg. And this is vitally important. I've already spoke about putting distance between yourself and the fed area. These big, wary old carp, you know, if you can give them a bit of space, make them feel safe and secure. So I'm always looking at fishing at least the top five or more away from myself. Today I'm fishing the top six, and if I could get further around the corner, fishing longer, I definitely would. Putting space between me and those fish is of utmost importance. The next thing to look for is the depth. This can vary from time of year, from, from month to month. So always keep your finger on the pulse, not only in the depth that you've caught in, but asking other people what depth they fished in. Mark your pole and be very precise when looking for this depth. The next thing, and it is again of utmost importance, is looking for a nice clean bottom. Keeping away from any underwater obstacles, be it house bricks, stones, anything where the bottom's a bit up and down. The fish aren't going to feed properly on this. Even if it's sloping a little bit, it doesn't bother me, as long as it's a nice clean one. Always use a big plummet, 30, 40 grams, and just search around and look for that nice clean bottom. If you feel any underwater obstacles, edge away, fish away from them. Once you've got all that correct, accuracy. You must fish accurately to the end of the section with a far bank marker, or even like today, I'm using the end of a branch as a marker. Accuracy, accuracy, accuracy. Once I've plumbed up, fished, and everything in the same spot, what I try to do is imagine that there's a three pint bait box on the bottom, and I'm plumbing up, I'm feeding, and I'm fishing in that. If you can put all those together, you're gonna catch a lot more fish in the margins. Tip number five, bait choice. Obviously this can vary from venue to venue and obviously from week to week, things can change. Two tips I can give you. Number one, if you're not sure, you can't find out any info, go with what you know. Go with the bait that you catch fish on, what you're confident in. Stick to what you know and you won't go far wrong. Next thing, if you can get any information, always look for people's match reports, any write up on the internet, anything like that, information you can get off any other anglers. Because normally, you know, once you follow the procedure of finding the right place to fish, the right bait is then the next real important decision. And if you can get all that right, then obviously you're going to catch a lot of fish. For instance, in today's session, I've bought micros and corn. It was only the other day I fished here using ground bait in conjunction with a lot of dead maggots. I got pestered a little bit by little fish, but I did catch quite a few carp on the advantage baits, big carp. It's a fantastic ground bait, it holds a lot of bait and it's very, very heavy. One little tip just to finish on, if you're going to use ground bait, use one that absorbs a lot of water, like the Advantage Baits Big Carp. It absorbs a lot of water which makes it very heavy. If it's very heavy, when the fish come in and they're moving around, it's not going to ruck the cloud up and then obviously you can have problem with foul hooking fish. But like I say, bait choice is vitally important. If in doubt, stick to what you know. So there's my top five tips for margin fishing for carp. Follow them and you'll catch a lot more fish. It's such an exciting way of fishing. Sat in now, I can see a swell down the edge and I can't wait to get in. Put all those little tips together, hook that fish. You know they're gonna be big. And more importantly, in a match, you can go from nowhere to winning in the space of no time at all.